Welcome to Pixels and Pints Podcast. I'm Bradley. I'm Michael. And we're two dudes talking about video games while drinking pints. Not again. Not this time. Not this week. Man. What? what? Swear, bro. Bunch what? of little bitches. Just mm. a bunch of little bitches. No, I'm not bitching out this week. I'm not bitching out this week. I don't. Are you bitching out? I am bitching out. Okay, what you got? But to be fair, though, it's not my fault. All right. <laughs> I got I got blood work. I thought the blood work was on Friday, but actually it's tomorrow. So uh I, I like I haven't I haven't eaten since uh like three PM today. I think I'm supposed to be twenty four hour fasted, but I'm not. No alcohol. I have no idea what the fuck they're taking the blood test for. The blood work or whatever. It's not a test. I think they're gonna I think they're gonna check to make sure that I'm not uh fucking mutant or something like that yeah i think they do blood tests now to see if uh do you have like collector itis and shit like that like you're just digging through stuff trying to buy a bunch of games that we're never going to play i'm fucked dude i when i looked on here and i saw you type in blood test monday uh i thought that was a fucking beer <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh this motherfucker coming in there with some cool cool fucking uh bloody grapefruit shit or something it's like oh shit mm, that, that sounds good taste it. that sounds delicious yeah yeah unfortunately i actually had uh what was i um kbs i had a kbs mm. that was ready to go Damn. i was gonna i was trying to because that's the only thing that i could think of that was uh that didn't wasn't in a bomber bottle mm-hmm. and uh was gonna be like something that tasted amazing. I did find find oh, that was a weird way to say that. I did find a bottle uh, from the Lips of Faith series that oh. I didn't realize I had either. Ooh. It's like La Terrier, La Terrier. I don't know what the fuck that is, uh, but it's a. I think it's a barrel aged sour. Mm. I think is what it was. Um, I really, really thought about just fucking up my blood work just to, just to drink that but I'll, I'll wait for next week yeah I'll wait um, for next week you remember the uh, there used to be a sour that St. Arnold's made it was like a lemon sour or something and, and when we talked to a lot of the distributors and the brewers and stuff they were like this beer is pretty good but if you take a, a shot of vodka specifically lemon vodka and just drop it in there it elevates the shit out of that beer and I kind of want to fuck with that with like other sours St. Arnold's got rid of their sour. I forget what the fuck it was called. It was, um, uh, what was it? It wasn't a ghost. Uh, it was a basic ass sour. I think it was like two point something percent alcohol. Yeah, it was, it was real low shit. It was real low shit. Yeah. Which is also why they wanted to put vodka in it. Um, just to bring it up to like some, some type of drinkable shit. But speaking I mean, of drink, I'm not gonna, go I, I, I miss that beer. Really? I used to, I used to buy the fuck out of it. Hmm. Yeah. They used to buy the fuck out of boiler room. That's what it That's was. That's it. That's fucking it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think they I think they turned it into something else. Mm-hmm. Uh I think it was uh, Raspberry AF. Yeah. I think it was Raspberry AF is what they basically turned it into. I'm I don't even know if they too. carry Raspberry AF anymore. I don't think so either. It's been a while. Yeah. Well, I'm drinking a local sour beer. haters, dude. Okay. What do you got? Uh the eleven below coconut space um from Ooh. last year, because we didn't buy any this year. Um, so it's a local brewery. We've talked about them a lot in the previous podcast. I think specifically we drank a lot of their shit on the second or maybe even the third podcast. So it's been a while. Mm-hmm. Um, this is, uh, being that it's local, um, and it's a very limited release. It comes out like once a year for like two fucking weeks. And if you don't get it, that's it. They don't have any more. And yeah. this is also a limited release of a limited release. So it's a variant of their negative space that they add coconut to. Um, so it's even more limited. Um, and um, then, um, you should have kept it in your, you should have kept it in your fucking beer closet, man. Like why are you drinking it? You well, just... Cause we, we have, we have a couple more. Um, and I wanted mm. to, I wanted to go ahead and fuck on this a little bit. Um, it is a little bit lower ABV for what it is. It's a, an Imperial milk stout with coconut in it. It's 9.5%. Yeah. Um, and a few reviews that have, uh, bubbled up online for it. Uh, it has a four out of five on untapped and it says in a on beer advocate. Cause there's not a lot of reviews, but there's two reviews and the ad, um, uh, aggregate of those, the mean of them is 4.5 out of five. So <laughs> everybody seems to like it who drinks it. Um, it just doesn't make it around, uh, anywhere outside of a very small community here in Houston. 
It makes sense. Yeah. It, it's it's good. Um, yeah. It's one of the I hate coconut as uh, as a flavoring with anything, but it's not like in your face. No, no. Even Janet, it's, Janet will not eat coconut anything, and she likes this. Yeah, it's so, pretty good. They make a um, the birthday cake variant of this that you can only get on tap at the brewery. They typically do it out of the cask, and God damn it, that shit's good. But it literally, I couldn't stand it. you couldn't. I couldn't oh I couldn't damn, stand dude. It. Well, I, I really, I like, um, I like German chocolate cake. It's like one of my favorites. Of um, course you would. Yeah. Um, and it, and it, it's because of all the coconut and all that other shit with it. It's very rich tasting. Um, so you get the uh, inside of that that beer. So what's the so what's the what's the what's the sweet bullshit that they put on German chocolate cake? Ooh, God. Uh, is it's it's like it's a coconut. It's a coconut, something like sweet coconut, right? So it's yeah, like a yeah. super sweet coconutty bullshit. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what exactly what it is. Me either, but they but it's kind of like, like nougaty almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. very thick and sweet. Yeah. Uh, real big fan. Um, shit. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, sucks you can't have a drink with me, uh, but I'll I'll drink. Maybe one next you. week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for the channel stuff, man, uh, you've been still pumping out um, the dailies. Uh, I, like I said, I listened to the most recent one from Friday was really fucking good. If you guys, uh, are anticipating, um, the new tears of the kingdom game coming out, make sure you listen to it. Michael talks about it for about five minutes, uh, spoiler free, just kind of talking about what he's seen. Right. Uh, I'll let you talk a little bit more about it. Uh, if you want, but it's a fucking really good daily. Um, and all the rest of them have been to, I'm not going to say too much about it. Um, all I, all I will say is that it's it's basically more Breath of the Wild, put it that way. If if you were a fan of Breath of the Wild, you're gonna fucking love Tears of the Kingdom. If you hated Breath of the Wild, you're gonna fucking hate Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, there's no two ways about it. Yeah, I can't think of any anything, uh, even like the Ultra Hand ability, um, to make you think like, oh no 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 like. Tear, Breath of the Wild sucked, mm-hmm. but Tears of the Kingdom is better. Uh, that, that's it. Just doesn't. It's not the way that the game works. So yeah. I'll just put it that way. If okay. you like Tears of the Kingdom, uh, I mean, if you like Breath of the Wild, you'll love Tears of the Kingdom. And that's it. That's the that's the probably the best preview uh, or review. Even if you're the kind of person who doesn't want to know anything about the fucking game, you just want to know that is it, it is 100 percent more Breath of the Wild. And then you want to go in balls deep blind. That's all you need to know. You don't need to listen to anything else. That's all it is. You did tell me about a feature in the game. It's not spoiler or anything like that. It's called pro mode. Um, Oh yeah. Well, so this is part of the UI. Uh, I don't remember if breath of the wild added it uh, or had it in the, uh, the launch edition of the game, but I know they have it now. Mm -hmm. So basically if you go into the settings, there is an option to take your UI and I, they call it pro. It's a, like a pro option for the UI elements. Basically it removes everything entirely from the screen. You don't have the compass to show you where you're at in the world. You don't have the dots to show you where you're at or like, you know, you know which direction to like run at or uh, something like that. It gets rid of all of just the UI bullshit. So you're not reminded to press L to do this. You're not reminded to press R to do that. Your health bar disappears and it only shows up whenever you actively lose lose hearts. Or I think if you're like low, if you're like low health, like, you know, you're beeping. Does and it show up when you regain hearts? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So any, any so, interaction with your health, it shows up. Right. So, I mean, like your uh, stamina bar, like it shows your stamina bar. Hmm. So that, that's the, that's the only real difference is I, I think basically, it's cool, man. It sounds immersive as fuck. It really does. For for me personally, I played, I think, the first five hours or so uh-huh. with the regular UI, and I caught myself just following glowing dots. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yep, yep, yep. And I decided, uh, you know what? Um, I haven't played Breath of the Wild in a long time, and I kind of 
know where things are. So I decided just to turn everything off on the UI. You can still go into your map and, you know, look at a high level overview of the world yeah. and still see the dots, still, you know, kind of get your bearings, but you have to physically go into the map in order to do that. Oh, that's really cool. I like that. Yeah. So I like that a lot. Actually. Um, yeah. So it's one of the things I really loved about Breath of the Wild. You know, you can kind of just go off in a direction, mm -hmm. discover some shit and get your ass kicked or discover some cool stuff, you know? Yeah. And if you've played Breath of the Wild recently, I highly suggest you turn it off. If it's been a while since you've played, kind of like me, I turned it off just because I want to I want to discover things like again. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, uh I think for just as an example, uh like Kakariko Village, I completely forgot where that fucking thing was. I had no clue where it was. Oh. And I think it's, I think I've spent 25 hours or something like that so far. Damn. Barely found it. Holy shit. Barely found it. I was literally uh, like reading, uh, reading, uh, what do you call the little signs, mm -hmm. the little signposts uh, out on the road and then following directions there. Oh, that's so fucking I was, fun. I was talking to people. I was talking to people. And they're just like, oh, I was like, you know, oh, you know, Kakariko. It's like the village to the north. I was just like, I got to go north. Cool. All right. I like that. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, I, I've been I think that's rediscovering how Hyrule. I think that's how I'm yes. going to play it. That's so 100%. much more, more fun. So 100%. I, I'm literally rediscovering Hyrule right now. And it's it. I'm getting the same kind of like sense of discovery and kind of wonder mm -hmm. of being just kind of like this little small link asshole you know like running around like a jackass everywhere yeah it's amazing i highly suggest anybody who plays tears of the kingdom turn on pro mode on the ui after you've gotten past like the kind of like the tutorial mm -hmm. introduction sections and then just play that way yeah I guarantee I guarantee your your enjoyment of the game is gonna go like a thousand percent and 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 just speaking of Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom, sorry. It does come out this week, so we're recording this on May 7th. It launches yeah. May 12th. May 12th. So, we, so we're just a few days away. My anticipation uh, of this game right now is super high. Um, I'm pumped as fuck. It's literally all I can think about when I think about gaming right now. Um, but to keep myself like away from playing anything, I've been playing little little shitty old stuff on, what is this thing, my Ambernick fucking rg 35 xx i don't know what that is oh what it's, fuck is that? it's a little android handheld that plays like oh. uh, all the way up to like ps1 maybe maybe ps2 but definitely up to ps1 um and i've been playing like a lot of um ogre battle march of the black queen which is a game that i used to play a lot when i was a kid and i never PSP? beat it uh it was PlayStation? It was Super Nintendo, and then and then they remastered it for PlayStation. They added a bunch of stuff in there. Okay. I think I'm playing the PlayStation version. Nice. Maybe. Yeah. Nice. So, but just trying to stay away from anything that's Breath of the Wild-like or anything that has, like, active combat, because I don't want to burn myself out. Um, right. Yeah. And uh, just to be aware, mm -hmm. uh, Tears of the Kingdom, like, the, the ROM image has leaked it leaked last monday i think or at least that's when it became mainstream mm -hmm. last monday so the roms out there be careful um so that means that a lot of assholes have gotten their hands on it and they're starting to play it and if you're the kind of person who doesn't like super curate their online you know, like kind of behavior like mm -hmm. where you go and and stuff like that you're going to run into spoilers. So if you're, if you're not part of a forum, if you're not part of like, uh, especially like if you hang out on discord all the time, a bunch of assholes going to be talking about it. There's no way you're going to be able oh, to yeah, escape yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. A Just, lot of, a lot of reputable forums, they have locked a lot of this discussion out into like, you know, mega threads where mm -hmm. you have to specifically go and search this out. Yep. I so think they're doing the careful. same thing on Reddit. Uh, at least yeah, for yeah, the Zelda subreddit. They're like, this is the spoiler one. It's, uh, pan to the top. You go here, discuss the game. Excuse me. Nowhere else you're allowed to talk about it. So, basically, yeah. so as long as you stick to like places that are are organized like that, you'll be fine. Yep. Um, interesting part. Uh, Nintendo's actually released a, a day one patch already. That's uh, patch version one point one point zero is officially live. 
and it'll be part of the, and I am assuming like at least for the digital version. So if you pre-ordered the digital version, I think they're being the, the game is being preloaded now. Okay. So you'll have that 1.1.0 version uh, on your, on your switch day one for physical uh, owners. I believe the cartridge is 1.0.0. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think there's very, a lot of significant changes in the patch. So I'm not really too sure what exactly is is on it at the time um, that we're recording this, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, the 1.0 version of the game is good enough, okay. fine. So you're not, you won't be missing out on anything. Uh, crazy thing is, Nintendo is Nintendo's kind of pissed that people people playing Tears of the Kingdom right now. Oh yeah, yeah. There's there's been hella They're fucking people uh, posting early reviews that are kind of. Sp- they don't have any spoilers, just kind of like you, just like, hey, this is a really fucking good game. If, if you like Breath of the Wild, you're like this type of stuff. So, oh, if you're if you're the, if you're going to release anything on Tears of the Kingdom right now, you're mm-hmm. fucking idiot. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're, you're going to get fucked. Idiot. Yeah, you're going to get super fucked. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo isn't fucking around with that. Yeah. Um, Their embargo. I don't know when their embargo drops. I believe it's probably midnight on Friday. So. If you're the kind of person to want to, you want to roll the dice on Nintendo, go for it. Nintendo ain't fucking around with this one, though. No, we just saw we'll that with, uh, what's his face last week or the week before? Point Crow. Point Crow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that was Breath of the Wild bullshit. <laughs> fucking, you know? that's a five, six year old game made a uh, patch for it and uh, yep. got blasted. So, yep. Nope. Uh, right now, they are launching DMCAs against uh, some of the homebrew tools mm-hmm. for the Switch. Uh, I think Lockpick RCM is the biggest one that got hit. Lockpick RCM, if you're not uh, into like the Switch kind of like hacking scene, essentially what it does is it allows you to um, dump these prod keys is what they call them. That's what all the emulators need in order to play uh, actual games on not just the uh, Nintendo Switch emulators, but also on the Nintendo Switch if you play like on a uh, what do they call it like an MU MMC so if you have custom firmware that you play your switch on that you play on your switch in order to do things like you know add mods add mm-hmm. cheats uh, to dump your game cards games folders all you, that shit yeah you need the prod keys mm-hmm. in order to play those games in order to install the games without them it's basically useless and okay. so Nintendo dropped the DMCA on that no clue I think I think the because this is all open source. Uh, GitHub is not letting you fork the lockpick RCM uh, repository right now. Um, it could be Monday, tomorrow. By the time this podcast goes live, we'll find out if the lockpick RCM, if that entire just uh, source code repository, if that's all fucking gone. Damn. So, yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Super yikes. Uh, Nintendo, like I said, Nintendo's not fucking around. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I don't blame them. Uh, but yeah, let's let's go ahead and fucking get into it. Uh, the last thing is uh, the Xbox Game Showcase uh, for some of the quick stuff. We've already talked about it. I think it wasn't a big secret. The, the only the only real thing is that Microsoft officially announced their showcase June 11th, 10 a.m. Pacific time. The Starfield Direct is going to be immediately afterwards. There's an extended showcase that they have a couple of days after that, which is basically um, just extra information developer interviews that are going to that's going to air on june 13th we basically knew all of this Uh Um, microsoft just officially announced it uh i think last week this past week okay so that's it uh it was golden week the past uh this past business week in japan which means japanese people fucked off and they had no work or most of them didn't have any work at least the people who were like doing developing work and whatnot they're probably they probably all had the day off yeah um or not the, the week off it's an yeah. entire week of stuff so a lot not not a lot of information coming out of japan all this stuff was domestic and there wasn't a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of information this week that being said uh golden week was really dope uh if you missed it that sucks uh for really good game deals on like steam uh switch uh the playstation store Everywhere had fucking hell of game deals. Uh, Capcom, yeah, they did. Uh, Square Enix, shit like that. So I picked up a mm-hmm. like the old Devil Devil May Cry HD remakes, a bunch of other stuff that I didn't have. Um, and again, uh, 
everything was like, you know, fucking five, ten dollars. So kind of awesome. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, let's fucking get into it, man. Okay, let's go. Let's uh, get into it. So first off, we wanted to talk about the Humble Bundle uh, that just released. Or what is this, the Humble yeah. Bundle Choice? This is Humble Bundle Choice, $12. If you do the monthly thing, I think it you get a slight discount if you pay the yearly rate. Um, but either way, uh, Humble Bundle dropped their May 2023 games. Uh, the big one, I think the, their banner title, Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate Demon Hunters. I'm not a Warhammer guy, but turn-based tactical RPG. If you if you like that kind of thing, it's I think right now like you it's like a forty dollar game. Yeah. If you try to purchase it on Steam right now. It looks epic as fuck though, if you're into turn based RPGs. Or tactical yeah. RPGs. It's not very turn based, I don't think. Uh is it? Yeah, it is. It is. It is turn based. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, isn't that like the that's what Warhammer's all about? Yeah. Um so I mean, if you're the if you're the kind of motherfucker that likes to just get on mechs and just tear shit up it's a good game for 12 dollars. you can't you can't beat that yeah you can't beat it and plus uh, plus this uh this humble bundle comes with like a shit load of bangers in my opinion it does yeah uh that was just the first one the next one spirit fair farewell edition this is one that i've always been telling myself i'm gonna play but i haven't touched it yet same it is a uh a management game about ferrying uh, dead spirits to the into the afterlife or something like that. So you're kind of like the in between, and so you meet all of these spirits, you talk to them, you house and board them, and then I think they they're all gonna have like their own kind of quest or kind of thing that you need to accomplish for them in order for them to move on. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I really wanted to play this this past year. Uh, it got uh, crazy crazy reviews everywhere, but I was in such a yeah. dark place that I didn't want to fuck with it. But now I'm in a very, very good place. Uh, so I, I think this is going to be something that I play at least this year. Um, it looks really fucking good. And the story it does seems look really very fucking rewarding. Good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it claims to have about 30 hours if you want to complete it, plus 50 hours to kind of do everything. I think the Farewell Edition includes all of the previous kind of add-on content as well. So a lot of stuff. Uh, it even has a, it looks like a local co-op thing. Yep. So, uh, especially if you're if you're the kind of person that has uh, somebody to do uh, local coach couch co-op, uh, this sounds like a, a cool thing. Uh, the next one was probably the biggest kind of surprise because I didn't know it existed. Uh, it's called Bendy in the Dark Revival. This is looks like a first person survival horror game. Yeah. Yeah. It but... looks creepy. It looks creepy. So I got like I kind of got some like Five Nights at Freddy's kind of vibe with it. Um, but it seems like the the developer. The, so the developer is Joey Drew Studios and the game takes place in Joey Drew Studios. So this sounds like a bunch of, um, I don't know, artistic, I guess, kind of people who have a very strong art aesthetic when it comes to uh their games and so it seems yeah. like they made a game basically about themselves mm. so they created an entire world based on i don't know probably like shit that they would like to draw <laughs> and so they turned it into bendy and then and the dark revival this is a i think this is a sequel to a previous game so this is the second game in the series okay they have a they have another game that's set in the same world this has like so, that um that old school rubber hose animation style shit to it. At least Bendy looks like that. So like the, um, the way Mickey Mouse was on that, like old school tugboat animation back in the day with his like, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So it has a little so, bit of that type of feel to it. It's kind of neat. It looks, it looks really neat. It looks really neat. I'm probably going to check that out. Um, the next game, Operation Tango, this is a co-op. It's basically a co-op only game. Mm -hmm. It's in the same vein as the, I think called the past within, uh, from the rusty lake folks. Basically you're, you play as an, you play as an agent or a hacker, or I should say one person plays the agent, the other person plays the hacker and you both have to launch the game. And this includes what they're calling a, a friend pass. So 
one person can buy it once, and then you can have your friend uh, play the friend pass for free. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah, so, like, the... Because the game requires two people. So if one person purchases it, then you can use the friend pass to have the other person, uh, I guess, be the other side. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it requires two people to kind of communicate with each other, um, to help them to know, like, you'll, you'll be presented these puzzles that have no real... Um, clues about what the solution is you'll just have like a whole bunch of like buttons with like different pictures on it and then the other person will will know that they have to i don't know like talk about these pictures and maybe there's a specific order that this person has to communicate to the other person so they push it on the machine in order to get past it and blah 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 and that and all that sounds neat uh it's neat if you have somebody to play it with uh the past within I think uh, I think we spent two hours uh, when I played it. A friend uh, oh, is super yeah, yeah. huge. She's super huge into these type of games, like Escape Room mm-hmm. and whatnot. And uh, she told me about this game. We played it. I think it took us about two hours to get through it. She had already played it once. Um, it was an amazing experience because you're basically, you have no clue what the hell you're looking at or what to do. And... You're relying on the other person to be vocal, communicative, and try to explain what's going on. And then you have to take that, and you have to somehow translate that into something that you need to do on the screen. Okay, okay. It, yeah, I remember you talking about this game. It was it sounded yeah, really yeah. fucking, um, a, a really fun co-op experience. And, and, and I like the fact that it's a short game, because it makes it not overstay its welcome. Oh, for sure. So, yeah. like I said, it's it's one of those things where you basically have to have somebody who is really communicative mm-hmm. and is not going to be just silently there. Like, yeah. you literally have to talk the entire time. Because so if fun. you don't, then you're going to miss out on what it is you need to do. Mm-hmm. The other, like, you have to communicate back and forth. So, like, there's things on your screen that you have to can you make, communicate to them. There's things on their screen they have to communicate to you. And if okay. you just don't talk then it's going to be a complete failure. Mm. So Operation Tango, if you're into those kind of things, it's probably going to be pretty pretty damn decent. Yeah. This next one I'm pumped about. Windjammers 2, dude. Yeah. Um, I don't know about this. No? I, no, I don't know. Like, I never got into the, the Neo Geo game, oh. the original. Uh, I heard Windjammers 2 came out, and is it good? I don't know if two is good, but I played the shit out of Windjammers one as a kid. Um, so the uh, there was a summer where our washer and dryer broke, and so I spent a lot of time just going to the laundromat. And the laundromat had a Neo Geo cabinet which had uh, Samurai Showdown two, uh, Metal Slug, Windjammers, and something else. Maybe a fucking magician, something or another. And, Magician uh, Lord was was a was a Neo Geo game. Okay. I never had I never had a Neo Geo cabinet uh, oh. that had wind jammers. Oh, it was super fun. Um, <laughs> it's, it, I mean, it's fucking uh, air hockey. <laughs> so basically, yeah. Uh, I just like the super moves that you can do. Like they they flip up the fucking disc way in the air, and then they like do some backflip bullshit and like kick it across the screen. Uh, it's really fast paced. Um, I don't know. The the newer version just has different characters that have different abilities, different speeds, um, things that unlock their combos and shit like that. I think if you're an old Windjammers fan, you'll probably like this. If you're uh, looking for something that's fast and co-op, this could be something for you too. But it looks neat. It just has that like, it has that uh, style that reminds me of the new Streets of Rage 4. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say, though, I, I'm not a fan of all of these pixel-based games turning into, like, this these clean, yeah. like, solid line art yeah, it's kind of uh, designs. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm sure it's, it's probably a lot cheaper to do it that way, but I just haven't gotten to the, like, River City Girls. Yeah, I like, like it. Like, what they did, I like that. Yeah. Uh, Have you seen... Streets uh, of Rage 4 did it really well, though. Yeah, yeah, it I looks really good. Did you see uh, Double Dragons? Uh, yes. Gaiden? Gaiden? Gaiden. I, I don't <laughs> fucking know if I like 
it looks like the gameplay is fun. <laughs> but that uh that, and double dragons, they gate in, huh? Yeah, they gate yeah, they in. Gate in. <laughs> they gate in, man. Yeah. Uh Rise I, of the Shadow I, or something like that. I'm not I'm not a fan of the chibi art style. No. That that's what kind of did it for me. Yeah. The big um, head, small body, fucking weird yeah. shit. I was like, ooh, that's a fucking box. I mean, I'm pr- I am I, I think I've already purchased a physical copy of it. <laughs> it because comes out it's in Double September. Dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's fucking Double Dragon. I love fucking Double Dragon. I'm Dude, this a huge is, fan of that series. This is a rogue game. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Fuck me, dude. Yeah. Uh, ah, shit. So, but yeah, like, I don't know. When I was a, when I was a kid, uh, Double Dragon spoke to something like everybody. deep inside me fucking for something everybody. right fucking I, I remember playing the fucking uh the first arcade game mm-hmm. uh where my grandma lived um there was a corner store that had a double dragon arcade cabinet and anytime we had to go over there i always fucking went to that cabinet i fucking loved the shit out of it something about just the the music uh, just dudes beating the fuck out of each other. Yeah. I was just like, yeah. Grabbing a motherfucker amazing. by the head and just knee fucking the shit out of him and his head and just slinging him over your shoulder and then jumping up, pop, pop, pop. Like the fucking gameplay was yeah. good. Uh, the Even the platforming you had to do in the, the OG Double Dragon was good. Um, I don't know. I, I like Double Dragon. I just hope that this one that's coming out, I know that we're kind of getting off topic here uh, bit. in terms of art style. I just hope that it's good. Uh, I but, think Witcher is going to be good. I think people should yeah. give it a shot. <laughs> I think Double Dragon needs a needs a W, man. They it really does. do. They they did shit. They, Double Dragon they Neo or something shit. like that. Neon. Neo. I think Neon. Yeah, yeah Neon, Neon wasn't wasn't that Mixed good. As fuck. Uh, there was also the Double Dragon. I think they called it Double Dragon Four, which used the Double Dragon Two sprites. Yes. And created a new game out of it. I purchased it on Steam. I mean, and it's okay. It's okay, but like, just nobody has given it the legit kind of like River City, yeah, uh, ransom because like River City Girls is essentially that fucking like recreation of that entire series of games. I forget the name of the um, the Japanese version, but like the Japanese games have so many games in that series. Uh, River City Girls Zero, I think, is yep. a Kind of like a a re-release, but kind of like also kind of like a, a slight tweak. Yep. On a yeah, um, it's a it's a different uh, art style completely. It's like the the pixel art style, I think. No, well, yeah, because that's the, what they did is they took the original Japanese game and they tweaked it a bit to uh, put the I think uh, the River City Girls kind of like they added them to it. Yeah, a little it's, bit. What is it called? The Kunio games or something like that? Yeah, Kunio Kun. There you go, yeah. Kunio Kun. So. Um, I fucking love those that entire game series. I, yeah, I, but like I you bought, said, <laughs> they they have a Metroidvania type of one. I mean, even River City, the original is kind of Metroidvania, like it's Metroid ish. Yeah. Um, they they had one recently that I bought. Uh, that takes place like in feudal Japan or some shit, and it's like all the old Japanese lords or Chinese lords. I don't. I don't know. It is fucking wild. Uh, you'll walk into a screen and there's literally like 600 fucking enemies to fight. It is absolutely insane. Um, Knights of Justice. Oh, the fuck is that? Is that what it's called? Oh, oh, that this looks like an RPG. But this is set in like, uh, it's kind of like feudal, but maybe it's just Kunio Kun and then they just drop into like a, a feudal Japan type of thing. I don't know that, yeah. but it's a 3ds game. So yeah, uh, this is definitely newer than that. Man, so. we should get back to <laughs> these uh, humble bundle games. So Windjammers is good. I think people should play. It. I think it's a good release on here. Um, it's definitely not the hypest fucking game on this list, but uh, I don't know if it'll stack up to the next one where you're stacking bricks and building houses. Building like builder builder simulator. simulator. Yeah. What the fuck? So. <laughs> The, but this is good because yeah. most people who are listening to this podcast, you're probably never going to be able to own a house. This is the closest you'll ever get to True. it. True. Using True. Builder Simulator. I, I, I just want to touch on this real quick. I saw something today. This has the average income of someone who needs to, what you need to be able to make on average throughout the U.S. to move out of your parents' house is $60,000, which means you need to make $30 an hour. <laughs> to move out of your parents' house. And that just, that only includes rent. Yep. So you need to make almost 70 K 
or you need to have four roommates. So builder simulator, get in there, be a construction worker, build your fucking house of your dreams. Uh, and then cry when you'll never be able to own it. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, the market is fucked up. <laughs> market is fucked. It is but, fucked. But I got mine, so I, yeah. I don't care what happens to the rest of you bastards. <laughs> <laughs> when I die, you can buy my house, guys. Um, there, you so, go. there you go. Uh, you and your, you and your like five or six roommates can try to purchase the house off of me. Put yeah. it that way, because you'll yeah. still never be able to afford it. Yeah. And, oh, man. Man, oh, man. Uh, <laughs> That's fucked. Me and my fucking five extra bedrooms. Um the next game is uh, behind the Lexing frame. On him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> behind the frame, the finest scenery. Uh, this is an interactive fiction game. I tried to look at this one up, and it looked so fucking unappealing to me. I mean, it. I think it's it's just that that art kid who yeah. has no clue. Uh, yeah, you're trying to like put together like a, a fine art piece and you're just living your fucking life listening to music and drinking coffee and stuff. And it is like not yeah. the real art kid experience at fucking all. No, you're pretending like if you want to be an art kid. Yes. But you have none of the none of the talent to do any of that shit. None so of the talent, like none of the depression, <laughs> yeah. none of the financial, uh, 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 you know, uh, headaches and stuff like that, you know. You don't have to I actually can afford, go. I can afford a one room studio yeah. in New York City, uh, you know, which <laughs> nobody can do. No, you know, I so. can spend my entire day, you know, learning to paint and trying to be an artiste. Yeah. Ninety nine percent of people don't have that luxury. So no. you get to live vicariously through behind the frame. The finest scenery. I'm glad you said the finest scenery. I thought it was the first scenery. I had no fucking clue. <laughs> That's how much I didn't know about this game. That's <laughs> That's because you're drinking that blood work. <laughs> I am drinking that blood that work. Monday morning blood work. Um, I will say though, mm -hmm. at least the the art aesthetic seems to like it's, it's on point. So good. It's it is it is really pretty. It is really pretty. The, um, I think these people are definitely uh, a art studio first. Yeah. They just decided that they wanted to turn it into a game somehow, and this is basically what it is. Yeah. They, I, it's, it's like that other studio. They wanted to show you what their actual dream is. They were like, I know we have to make video games to make money, but God damn it. We would just rather be painting and drinking coffee and listen to fucking, uh, our, some LP on a fucking vinyl record and shit. And just hanging out with some big ass Sony headphones with a wrinkly cord and shit. Yeah. So. This is, this is basically what that is. Yeah. Really well done. The game itself Probably not much to it. Mm -hmm. It it probably probably there isn't a lot to do. But goddamn, doesn't it does it look fucking amazing? It looks though. fucking good. This yeah. next one though, I I looked at the screenshots and I was like, this game looks stupid as fuck. It's called The Invisible Hand. And then I watched the trailer, and I was like, oh, this is literally Office Simulator, sort of, except you work at a um, a stockbroker company. And you're yeah. trying to buy and manipulate stocks based on things that are happening in the market, like uh, uh, elections going bad or uh, stuff happening, you know, companies going under, uh, natural yeah. disasters, you know, birth rates are down or birth rates are up, whatever. And you're, you're trying so hard to manipulate the market so you make a shitload of money. And then you also have to go to court in the game if you get fucked up and get... Uh, fraud charges against you and so like you have to go do all this like court weird shit and then you get to harass your co-workers and yell at them and throw stuff at them and cause drama i was like this game is kind of fucking hilarious and it it just looks like kind of sort of realistic and like there's like a woman sitting beside you and, and in the video he's like throw in like wads of fucking crumbled up paper and hitting her in the face while she's like what the fuck and he's like fuck you yeah it's it looks funny. Um, I don't think you have to know anything about stock market to play this game. Um, you probably don't. Yeah. I think I think in combination with Builder Simulator, uh -huh. if you're sad because you built the house mm -hmm. that you know you're never going to be able to afford, go ahead and switch over to the dark side and yeah. be part of the problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just earn gobs of money, ignore your family, Yeah. and just stack paper, man. And it's so funny, dude. They're like the whole game is like a meme about what capitalism is and just shit and all over it. Like it's so fucking funny. Um, 
I, this will probably be something that I play because it looks like a short game. Um, so it looks like a short investment. Something you play in like a night, you laugh your ass off, have a couple beers, uh, and then sit down on the couch and think about like why you actually aren't playing the stock market with a little bit of money that you have so that you can afford the house that you built in Builder Simulator. Yeah, I, I think I think this is probably like a just a slightly more involved <laughs> like like office simulator where yeah. you're basically just like uh, it's again just a meme of the entirety of office culture <laughs> yeah. and the norms and you know just kind of like everything that goes on inside of an office building inside yeah. of your cube. You know what I mean? If you've ever been part of Cube City and just the bullshit and just nonsense that goes with being a part of that world. It's kind of like that, except yeah. a little bit, a little bit more in depth when it comes to like the stock market. Wearing that fucking mask in the office, so no one knows who you really are. Uh. <laughs> yeah, dude, fuck <laughs> that shit. My, I will say that I, I've been so lucky being like an art major that everywhere I go, um, up for the first part of my career was like a little bit masky, right? I had some places where I could just be full mask off, you know, Molly Percocet that shit. But like when I went into like an ad agency, uh, I was like trying to be formal and stuff. And my uh, art director came to me and he goes, hey, man, I know you got a little bit of a freak flag. Let that bitch fly. <laughs> Let that bitch fly. He was like, we're all art kids here. We're all art kids. We're all fucked up. It doesn't matter. Turn it on. Turn it on. We need you to be weird. And boy, was I fucking weird there. And I had a great time. You should be. Yeah. So that's 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 one of the things getting into corporate life mm-hmm. where it's really tough to to have like a good a good like line in the sand mm-hmm. that you don't cross over mm-hmm. because there's a there's a ton of freaks. There's a ton of freaks out there. And so you gotta know who you can freak with and you gotta know who you can't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And sometimes you just gotta drop a weird weird hint on them. Like normally I'll I'll talk to people about like the the most asinine like small thing I'll just drop on people is like some weird video game shit or like some anime shit. And if they're like, oh well, I don't know, then we're done talking. We're done talking. We are we cannot be friends. And then like I'll dig a little deeper yeah. and shit like that. But you know, um it's nothing <laughs> yeah. like it's nothing like invisible hand. You know, I'm not I'm not chucking uh balls of paper at Helen or anybody. So Yeah. No so, man. Life's too short for that shit. Way too short. Make that paper. Ooh, man, speaking of paper, dude, I want to talk about this. <laughs> you say you, I want to talk about want, I know I do. To. Yeah. I'm so, I'm, so we got one L this week and it's, yes. we, we anticipated this being an L when they announced it. When we watched the trailer, Yeah, um, we, we looked at how this game was put together and we were like, this is not going to go well. Um, because they didn't release a lot of information about it. They also uh, had the game locked to like a very low frame rate. Uh, they didn't yeah. have like performance and all this other stuff turned on. We, we've we talked about it uh, the past couple of weeks. Um, so Redfall released to overwhelming negative reviews, lots of fucking Ooh. bugs, uh, all kinds of shit. Um, I, I want to talk quickly just about like, the gameplay that I've seen uh, being posted all over Reddit, uh, specifically people will walk up to uh, enemies that they're supposed to interact with. Enemies don't interact with them, or they can literally just hide behind a fucking stick on the ground. If the enemy goes, oh, I can't, I can't get close to you. There's a stick. There's something small. Or they'll just zip right through the fucking bottom of the ground and just disappear. Um, I played about 15 hours of the game. No, you Ask didn't. Anything. No, Ask you did anything. it. Oh my Ask god! Ask me anything. I fucking how, did. How how bad is it in comparison to what's being shown online? Because it looks fucking hilariously bad. They're one hundred percent correct about the AI. <laughs> the AI is brain dead. It's ridiculous how bad the AI is. <laughs> oh god! I was uh, the first. The first, I think, five hours or so. Uh huh. I was literally walking up to motherfuckers and just blasting them in the head dead. That's that's it. Like they, yeah. they had no response. If their response was to like go hide, like they would get locked into their animation to go like find cover and then get behind it. So basically you could do anything you wanted to them up until that point. Damn. Because they were going to get into hiding and then look out 
and then wait a couple of seconds before trying to return fire. Damn. So if you ran up to people, you just blast the fuck out of them. I, I saw uh, one video clip where this dude was supposed to be sneaking up to a house or something. And there were mm-hmm. six dudes that are supposed to be there guarding it. But for whatever reason, all the enemies had their back turned to him and they were all looking at the house and they were in a straight line. So he walked up to them, hit them with a butt stroke. They just fell over dead. Walked, bam, bam, bam. Just one after the other. And none of them moved. They didn't. There was no interaction. Like I've just seen wild fucking, even the bosses would just stand there. Yeah. Like, it's, it looks, Yeah, I, I don't know how they released a game that's so busted. I don't fucking know either. Uh, I will say that I did run into, so the way the, the way the game works, the way it's structured, right? Okay. Um, you have these scientists who have discovered this power, which basically converts them into vampires. And so they decided to take over the world. And then you have like these cults, the cultists, I guess what they're calling them. Mm-hmm. Basically they pledged allegiance to whatever, you know, head vampire in the fucking city. Okay. And so you have these people who are basically working for them. I think they're using them to like um, lure people in. And so the vampires can feed on them or something like that. Okay. So that's how the game's structured. You have these cultists and then you have the vampires. So you have like the little low level vampires. They, they basically run at you, jump and swipe. That's, that's all they fucking do. It's really, it's really easy to dodge. There's really nothing to it. You've seen videos where they just kind of get stuck in place and you can just like walk up to them, just fucking punch them. Yeah. uh, Shoot them. I've run into that. You know, it's, there's nothing, there's nothing to it. There really isn't nothing to it. Um, a lot of glitches like enemies will sometimes glitch into the environment so i had a situation where there's this uh kind of like this it looks like a, i think it was a restaurant this restaurant had a wooden deck right a wooden deck that you walk up and they had like you know um tables and stuff for you know customers and whatever yeah for whatever reason the the enemy spawned or got stuck underneath that wooden deck <laughs> and so i would hear the enemy like they would be, they would like, they would spot me and they were shooting at me from underneath the floor. It's just like that kind of janky bullshit. Damn, that's so weird and because it it's such a pretty a fucking too. game. That's one thing that I think people have been overly harsh. That's the only thing I'll give about this game that they've been overly harsh on. The art aesthetic, it's so like good. The, co- the cohesion and the art style is 100% solid. 100% solid. I would be fucking destroyed being one of the artists on this team to have, and and no disrespect to developers, who knows what fucking uh, engine they're running on this thing, but for this thing to come out in like such jank, uh, I would feel bad as an artist. And and also to be fair, I know 3D uh, art is sometimes kind of hard, so maybe... Yeah, some of the art assets that were created don't work very well inside of the engine that they created, and so that's why things are clipping through the floor. It could be either artists or developers, but uh, for someone who did all the concept art and all of the fucking uh, models and shit like that, and doesn't have any actual control over how the art is placed in the world or how uh, characters interact with it or NPCs interact with it. Uh, this well, would be devastating for me as like crazy. I would fucking. Lose I'm it. glad you. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. Uh, because just today, just today, mm-hmm. there is an artist. I think she's from Arcane uh, Austin, right? Okay. So she would have been part of the dev- the team to work on this game. She posted. This was May fourth. So this is like a couple of days ago. Yeah. Yeah. Steve posted that Sadie Boyd is this person's name. Here is this is her uh, tweet that's gotten 1.5 million views. I did not anticipate my own peers, friends, or colleagues openly mocking and being gleeful of a difficult launch. Delighting in the failure of others, no matter how you feel towards a company, seems mean spirited. I feel sad, confused. And disappointed. She is a senior 2D artist for Arcane Studios. I, yeah, it would be rough. Like, you don't want to see this shit fail. You put. You really don't. And as a developer or like an artist, like, you really do pour 
so much of your, not just time, but like heart into this fucking work. Um, that, but that's, it, the, that's the thing that kills me about the game yeah. though. That's what fucks me up about the game. Cause like I said, aesthetically, mm-hmm. I, I enjoy the entire thing. I enjoy the the characters, the way they look. You know, they're very exaggerated. It's a very arcane character art style. Yeah. But the way that they've laid out the... Uh, so there's a couple of major locations uh, in the game. I believe I'm at the last location. So I think there's only really two locations to play through currently. Okay. The first location is just like a fucking... Uh, like a main uh, fucking uh, port town on the East Coast. You know, like that kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. It's a very small. They got a lighthouse. They have all of these really small shops. Oh, this is the city, the town that they show in the uh, main trailer, the first gameplay release trailer. Yeah. Yeah. The, just the, the layout of the city, everything, it looked great. I fucking loved it. Like, there's yeah. a part in the game where you can actually go up into the lighthouse. Mm-hmm. I went all the way up to the lighthouse and went out on the deck at the very top to look over the edge. It was fucking amazing. Like, again, it's not it's not exactly like the most high fidelity, like most technologically advanced graphics. But yeah. because of how cohesive the art style is, it looks beautiful. Yeah, it looks know? put together like like it a does. place, like a, a fucking real place. Like, it's cool. The, the problem is mm-hmm. it's empty. It's absolutely goddamn empty. There's nothing to fucking do. Absolutely nothing to do. <laughs> they created and they crafted this amazing world and locale, but you have absolutely nothing to fucking do. There is like, <laughs> there is like <laughs> that. Uh, I, that's stunning, honestly. There's a. I think there's about seven or eight main missions in the first location. Yeah, that take you through some major landmarks in that city, and then after that, they whisk you off to another place. And you can never go back to the previous. Oh, that city. sucks. It does suck. Yeah. Because once you once you've basically completed there, there's nothing else left to do. Yeah. You know, you've beat the big bad. Everything, I guess, is fine. Uh, I mean, you, I'm probably they they probably still have the cultists and the the vampires just kind of roaming about. It's not like the entire. Well, I would hope so because once you kill the big bad, the game is already empty enough as it is that there's not enough things to do you know i found the first uh so the first five hours of the game Mm -hmm. i I didn't know how to like start a new mission so i got my first mission and they sent me off right so they takes you to the other side of the map that you're on so for the first five hours i went towards my first objective but then after i finished i was just like oh i'm just gonna go explore i'm gonna go like run into something right start a side mission or whatever yeah you're thinking that's not the way you're thinking like oh is this like borderlands you know? Nope, that's not how it fucking works. I visited every location that all the rest of the missions took place in. Oh, the problem no. is, is that if you if you reach there first, it's There's just a fucking do. empty place. There's nothing to do. All of the like the guards that would be placed there during the main mission that you actually have to go and visit that place, yeah. they're all gone. They're just like little roaming packs of like uh, vampires that are just kind of littered here and there. I hate it. But the entire place is fucking empty. So, like, I went to this fantastic-looking mansion Mm -hmm. that is probably one of the best parts of the game. But when you get there, there's, like, all this cool shit. There's, like, an amazing set piece where you're like, man, what the fuck happened here? But you're not going to know because you you don't start up any side missions. You don't get any clue to what the fuck's going on. All you know is that I'm just in this empty mansion area. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to find. So I, I, I hate that type of stuff. Like I would rather, yeah. I would rather you get close to an area and then your teammates back at the base hit you on your walkie talkie and they go, Hey, Michael, uh, we see that you're close to this fucking mansion. By the way, there's a wicked bitch there. Do you want to take this mission up? And then you hit yes. And they go, okay, here's all the details. And then you go in. But th- what they did instead was they took like an RPG approach like you would have with like Final Fantasy fucking, I don't know, fucking 11? No, 12? 12. Where there would be like a big ass Cactor or a fucking Marlboro or a fucking Wild Chocobos or some shit. And you could go yeah. to that area because you know that they're going to be there. But unless you went back to the bar 
and you picked up the fucking uh, wanted poster, that monster that you want to kill isn't there until you interact with the mission paper first, even though you've already been to that location. I hate that shit. I do too. I, I hate it. And and the the biggest, I think the thing that kills me is that you have to go to... You have to go to the same location to start the main missions. Mm -hmm. So you don't pick these up naturally just by traversing the world. You have like a base of operation to essentially complete a mission, travel back. I'm not even talking about like walk back because that would be boring as fuck. So you warp back to the uh, to your base of operation, pick up Mm -hmm. the next mission, go do that, complete it, do the next mission. And the only way and here's the thing that kind of fucking sucks, too. Yeah. The only way to get to the new area is you have to do what's called safe house missions. So the map is broken up into, I think like seven or eight neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So you have to find the safe house in each of the individual neighborhoods. And then you have to do safe house missions. Okay. Those are boring as fuck. Okay. Those are boring as fuck. There's so many different ways they could have laid this fucking game out. And it sounds like a fucking nightmare. Yeah. There's there's an infinite number of games. So they could have just looked at like, what is, what is good gameplay? And the worst part about, Well, the worst part of all of it, yeah. the missions suck. There's like one or two good missions that I played. Yeah. One was at Mansion, and I think there's I think there's another one in the next area that I thought was kind of cool. But outside of that, it's all bullshit. It's like go here, retrieve this, come back, turn it in. That's basically it. Okay, I'm the gonna ask. Sucks. Ooh, that's not. Go good. ahead. If 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 I had Game Pass and this is free on Game Pass, would you recommend that I play it? I guess it kind of depends. Um, I'm kind of invested a little bit into the story. Okay. Not so not so much the main mission, but I kind of enjoy how they. Uh, honestly, not really. Okay. If I'm being honest, the only reason I'm kind of invested is because I've already put some time into it. Mm-hmm. So. Um, so you just want to see it through the end. Yeah, so the first five hours, I would say, is enough to let you know whether or not you even want to bother even finishing the game. That like I said, a, the first five, five hours, hours is a big investment. It is a big investment. Yeah. Like I said, the only reason that I invested the first five hours is because I thought I was going to discover things organically. Mm-hmm. And then I discovered that's just not how the fucking game works. <laughs> you can never discover anything organically. <laughs> I wish I wish oh, they would just patch yeah. this game and just make it. Uh, not jank. there is absolutely nothing they can do to fix this. There's absolutely nothing they can do to fix this. The jank. This was well. The jank. They can fix some of the jank. Okay. They can fix the enemies stuck in place. And the they AI can fix the should. brain dead AI. What they can't fix though is just how boring the mission structure is. They can't fix how boring the loot system is. They can't fix that would how be a shit- major re-release. Yes, yeah. the skill tree is fucking useless. Ooh. The skill tree is fucking useless. I'll come out and say that. The skill trees are useless. That sucks, there man. is really no point to it. So, There's no so point. Your, your loot sucks, your skill tree sucks. Yeah. What the fuck is uh, the driving mechanism through this game other than the story? It's arcane. That's the only reason. Damn. They created one of the the best intro experiences I've ever played in my life through Prey. Hmm. It, again, I, I, I've told you to do this, and I know you haven't, but whenever you get a chance, mm-hmm. you need to launch Prey. P-R-E-Y. P-R-E-Y. Yeah. You need to play at least the introductory sequence. That is probably the best introduction to a game I've played in a long time. Okay. In a long-ass <laughs> time. And so I was expecting a little bit more of that. Okay. What I got was just a boring ass game where you're just told to go here and there. There's glimpse of what could have been. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The the kind of story behind everything is intriguing, but the way it's told sucks. Sucks fucking balls, dude. That blows. That blows. And this so the thing is, is like you get a glimpse into there's probably bits and pieces to where you can tell exactly what went wrong. So there's no animated sequences. They're trying to do uh, like kind of like how Bayonetta did theirs, where it's just like these 3D, uh, 3D models that are 
stuck in, you know, like they're stuck in posed. Yeah, yeah. And they communicate with each other back and forth through audio. Yeah. This is how Arcane does their uh, their story. So anytime, and the only time you get story is when you start a mission. <clears throat> Other than that, there's no real fucking story. Except uh, through something called grave locks. So there's a hundred of these tiny little grave locks. And when you pick it up, there is a woman's voice that speaks. It sounds like this woman was the... She's either the source of what happened or she is the person that was manipulated into being the source of what happened. And so it's really interesting to hear her speak because the way that she talks, she kind of talks about herself being some sort of like the savior figure. You know, do you remember that um, that one scene in that, what was it, uh, the Henry Cavill Superman where... Uh, he saved like those people in Mexico or something like that. And you see all the Mexican people coming up and like trying to place their hands on him or something yes. like that. Cause he like, like a God. Yeah. That's the kind of vibes I got from this person oh. that she was, she was using her blood to like either save people or she was using her blood to do something or this or that. Damn. And so the way that people, uh, just responded to her, the way they, the way they, she was revered as being like some sort of savior, like, just the way that she speaks about how her blood was the one to like save humanity or do this or that. Like, it's amazing. But the problem is, is like, you got to search that shit out. Like this is not woven through the story. Uh, big fucking story chunks like that should be part of the story. In my opinion, like, um, like dead space, for instance, you get a lot of the story just through playing and you, mm -hmm. you have to interact with some of these fucking, um, uh, the recordings and shit like that. But there are some hidden off to the side that give you exposition uh, to like what a, a person was dealing with right before everything happened. And it's just like, oh, you know, I'm the mechanic and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, I put a put together some shit and now there's necromorphs everywhere. Fuck yeah. Um, and, and same with uh, Alien Isolation. Like, right. You, you get a lot of just story through gameplay um, and interacting with people. It kind of sucks that they hid. Essentially what sounds like... Um, I am legend <laughs> levels of storytelling, not the movie, but the book, uh, behind, um, little mm -hmm. dog tag type of trophies that you have to pick up. That yeah. kind of sucks. It, it sucks. Cause the, the way, the way that it's doled out is it has to be, she like the, those grave locks, you only get like one or two sentences of information, which oh, means awful. that, which means that the, the message that she that she sends out or whatever the the audio log whatever it's called, whatever this whatever these grave locks are i don't know what it is they look like fucking test tubes so you pick up the te this glowing test tube and then it just you get a random uh woman's voice in your head okay so the way that it's structured is so that it's like a they vial have of to be, blood i guess and so you get one to two sentences and they essentially kind of have to make sense without any real context mm. So you're kind of interpreting what's coming out, which kind of fucking sucks because there, there's no, there's not enough time and there's not enough dialogue to really get a really cohesive kind of uh, glimpse into like what exactly happened. Yeah. And if you they're going to, I mean? if they're going to try to pull you into this, uh, this game, not front loading it with, with story is a good idea, but there needs to be more story to to pull yeah. you through and so not, not gonna, necessarily just story of like hey man there's a fucking mansion you need to go kill this bitch over here um so here's here's exactly what the problem is okay the there there are a lot of notes and things you can read out in the world they all fucking suck they all fucking suck there's not any real good information like there's nothing there's nothing worth reading out in the world. You know, you can find like little notes, uh, little uh, articles, newspaper clippings, all this stuff to read. All uninteresting. I stopped I stopped reading it uh, probably like the first five hours into the game. Once I realized like I was there was nothing of substance like in any of the things that I was uh, reading in the world. I just stopped caring. The the there is I think it's a side mission. Um Oh no! Wait. Oh, you're Elgato Dodd. Apparently. 
That's okay. We'll keep rolling. We'll keep rolling. I'd say this could be maybe the uh, where the camera died. Well, let me ask you this while you're trying to figure that out. So we we've we've seen that the game has hella low reviews. Like Metacritic is 56, Open Critic is 60, and then Steam is reporting this as one of the lowest reviewed games or lowest scored games uh, in history. Pretty close. That's fucking wild. Do you think it's because of the jank or the piss poor mission gameplay or the lack of story? Or do you think it's like a culmination of just everything being either so far off or just a little bit off that it creates a, a game that people just are not willing to put in the effort for? Or what do you, what do you think it is? Cause it sounds pretty, but very unfun. Essentially. Yeah. There's, there's really no reason to play the game. Um, one of the things that, one of the things that really kills it. Uh, so there's, so that it's, so it's weird. It's co-op, but it's also single player, Mm. but in co-op, the only person who gets actual mission progress is the host. Everybody else who joins the game, like you're not, you're not actually playing with them. Like you're playing with them, Mm -hmm. but all the missions that they finish, like you get no credit for it. So if you had, if you had like four friends that got together and just like, yo, let's play through the fucking game. You're going to play through the fucking game through the host. And so once you disconnect or somebody else switches host, you have to start back from fucking square one. So it doesn't really make sense to pick this up uh, like as part of your friend group because only one person is going to get the mission progress, which means that if everybody wants to, you know, go to the new game plus or get credit for everything they've done, you basically have to cycle between all four people that in sucks. order to get that. Happen. It does fucking suck. For a single player, there's really there's really not much to do. You're going to be running through all of this empty fucking landscape. You Did know? these motherfuckers like you not it. play Left 4 Dead? No. Well, this was supposed to be Far Cry, right? So yeah. they they got the whole thing where, you know, you're traveling around uh, you know, large maps, but like there's just there's just nothing to fucking do and there's nothing interesting to do. Like I said, there's nothing to discover. Once you realize that nothing you do outside of missions matters, then you just stop exploring. You know what I mean? Because there's no reason to. You're not going to be rewarded for it. One of the missions has, uh, with one of the characters in the first map, has you taking a pocket watch and putting it on his father's grave, right? So you take this pocket watch, you put it on his headstone or something like that, you return back, and then later on in the mission uh, progress, you find out that he goes to he goes to the gravesite, you know, to go to either go with the watch or go, you know, pray to his dad or something like that. And so you, to go find him, you go back to the grave and you find out that he's been killed because his, his father ended up being a vampire or something like that. And so you kill his dad, the vampire reborn, I guess. And then that's it. Like you get no context. Like you don't really find out much about who that character was, his dad, anything about why, like, any of this stuff is going on. All you know is that pocket watch dude really wanted to go see that pocket watch or his dad gets killed. You kill his dad done. That's Damn. it. There's nothing to it. Like I literally told you everything that the game tells you about what the fuck's going on. That's so fucking that boring, mission. dude. Yep. None of that can be patched out. None of that can be patched out. Fuck. The jank, <laughs> the jank, all that stuff that can be fixed. But it can't fix the fact that this is a boring ass fucking game with nothing to do, nothing interesting going on. Once you, it would be better to watch a YouTube video on the story. You probably get just as much enjoyment. Because Damn. again, there's not a whole lot to discover outside of it. it Maybe sucks. you can you can get some context clues. Uh, there is one mission I think where um, I read this later because I don't think I've gotten to this mission yet, but. Essentially, there is a a wedding, and you see like you see uh, bits and pieces of like all these invites in various people's houses. That you know, there's a wedding that's going to happen, and so one of the missions actually takes you to the church where everybody who went to the wedding ends up turning into vampires or something like that. But again, I don't think that's 
to force you to kind of like discover all that shit. And there's really no payoff. There's really no payoff. Just, sucks. You just find these these notes where everybody says they're going to a wedding and then you find vampires and then you kill them all. That's it. That blows. That's it. That blows. There's it, there, one. There's barely any good vampire games um, other than like Vampire the Masquerade and shit like that. Um, for like a <clears throat> run around, shoot them, fucking I'm a survivor type of game. Uh, I don't think that there's a lot. There's not a lot of um, good I mean, there's, there's shit loads of vampire movies, but there's not like a, a lot. And so like, I'm running dry. Uh, I, I love vampires. I love vampire, uh, lore, all that shit. Like queen of the damn fucking interview with the vampire. Uh, whatever that fucking, uh, midnight mass, this fucking series on Netflix. Uh, if it fucks super hard, probably one of the best vampire TV shows I've ever seen in my fucking life. Uh, right, shits right. on true blood. Um, and it doesn't feel like it's about vampires at all. Uh, it's about Catholicism uh, and a weird small town, a little fishing town, and there just happens to be a vampire there. And everything gets twisted and fucked up. <laughs> um, and at the Are end... Are you talking about Redfall? No. Are you talking about It's a TV show. show. Yeah. Okay. Is Redfall the same say, way? Like, I mean... There's a there's a priest in the first in the first uh, in the first map you play hmm. through, but uh, there doesn't really have n- not a lot of like Catholicism mm-hmm. uh, part of it. She's just a pastor, and that's really about it. Like she she doesn't really she doesn't really uh, talk much. She doesn't tell you very much about anything that's going on, other than the fact that if you do a mission. Uh, I think you get a mission to go to her place, her house, mm. to uh, find out what happened because somebody, uh, what was it, that she, uh, one of her friends or something like that went to her house to get like some vodka and cigars. And so the only thing that you know is you go to the house, this person's dead, and lying next to him is a box of cigars and vodka or something like that. So you go and pick it up and you return it back. She's like, oh, guess she didn't make it. And that's it. Like you don't, you don't really hear anything about why, how, like why she's the person that people are like pinning their hopes on to help them get through the situation. Why she seems to be kind of the the leader mm-hmm. in the the safe house that you're at. None of it. The, the, that bums me out. This game looks so fucking nice. Like it looks good to look at. Um. And it's got like this eerie fucking motif. Like everything looks cool. Uh, like you said, it looks very well put together. It sucks that this game is eating shit. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's nothing they could have done, to be honest. Like they would have had to delay this for another couple of years mm. in order to, to fix everything that's fucking going on with the game right now. So they just wanted there's to push it out, trying to have. grab some money and then... I, I, think, I think that's exactly what... Well, not, not, maybe not grab some money. I think they were just like... This is the best we can do. The only way to fix this would just be would to be to spend another couple of years in development time in order to fix the narrative structure, fix the the skills, fix the loot, you know, make everything feel like a living, breathing world. I think at that point, uh, if you have to make a decision as a company, and it sucks when you have to do this, but you go, if we push this game out in the state that it's in, how bad is it going to fuck us over for investors? How about as is it going to fuck us over for uh, our reputation as a game developer company? And how bad does it fuck everybody else's career here? And if you go, it's all bad, then you go, let's take a step back. Let's take a step back. Let's talk to some people. Let's get some more investors. Let's spend some more time. Or we turn this into a different game. We take this engine that we built. We do all this other shit. We scrap this motherfucker. I don't know. I don't, I don't, my guess is, ah, fuck, I don't know. This sounds like a fucking well, so nightmare. This whole thing sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, the, like they couldn't do the investor part because they're owned by Microsoft. They don't have any investors. Microsoft is their is their daddy. Yeah. Um, the engine is Unreal Four, so 
the I'm sure they've done some standard as fuck. Well, so it, it is. So here's the thing: like performance also is kind of janky. Um, graphically, like everything is all kind of fucked up. Um, it the texture work, the shadows, it's all fucked up. It's awful. It the like if you just take the art style, you can say like art style looks dope. Technologically, the game is kind of fucked up. The game's kind of fucked up. Man. <clears throat> That's rough to hear. Well, I don't want to I don't want to beat these guys down too bad. Um hopefully <laughs> hopefully they come out with a patch. Um I'm sure someone out there is fucking enjoying this game. But, yeah, uh, I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure people are enjoying it. I just don't think that it's the game that it was hyped up to be. Yeah. It's not the game that uh people were sold on or told it was going to be. A lot of the I remember the I remember the gameplay trailers before before the game was released. It kind of sounded like hey, like we're going to be creeping into this house. Oh, there might be some vampires. Mm-hmm. Like a rare like it just that's just not something like once you find out just like how fucking jank it is, you're just bum rushing into everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. There was there's one trailer. No, there's no, there's no sense of needing to sneak around. There was one trailer where oh. they showed, uh, somebody dropping like a fucking flame grenade through something and it fell down and like lit a bunch of dudes on fire. And then they went in a different way and started taking motherfuckers out and then like repelled down and then shot some dudes up upstairs and then saved some hostages. All that shit looked tight. It was like, oh my god, this is like Call of Duty, but vampires. Um, and it doesn't seem like it's that at all. Um, nope. Nope. Man. Honestly, I think they spent more money on marketing and the <laughs> and the videos that they put out because none of that shit's in the game. Like I said, everything's told through uh, 3D models mm-hmm. on uh, that are frozen in place while audio plays over. And it's... It's even like that. So there's one point in the game where you actually put in uh, a movie reel to play on a projector in a movie theater, and it the the movie that it projects or the video that it projects, same thing except no, it's 2D images uh, that are, uh, I guess uh, they're all. I mean, it's not animated. I'll put it that way. It's just a a series of 2D images while audio plays over it. That's how it tells the story. You hate to hear it. Like I said, there are a ton of things wrong with the game. The only thing they can do is patch it so that people aren't, you know, falling through the floor and enemies aren't uh, being spawned inside of the environment and the shadows don't look all fucked up and that the textures load in like they're supposed to. But outside of that, everything else, this game's fucked. Damn. Rest in peace. Put a stake in this game, dude. It's fucking done. <laughs> I think so. Uh, this is about as good as it's going to get, honestly. Like, outside of performance issues and bugs, this is about as good as it's going to get. If they just include, like, an uh, like DLC mm-hmm. that just adds on, it just repeats the same bullshit, like, there's really not a whole bunch they could do to make this as any better. You're just going to be getting more of the same shit. That's it. And honestly... It feels like I'm pretty close to the end. And I think there might be just like a dozen missions in total. And each individual mission, like there's really not a whole bunch to actually do. You just go kill the big bad, essentially. Except for that one uh, mansion mission. Outside of that, but again, it's like you get the thing to to put the thing there. And then it does some shit. Like that's it. That's rough. I'm sad. This is... um. This is not what I expected. I expected the game to be in like the, the low 70s to like the mid 70s. Yeah. Like when it got reviewed, I didn't think it was going to be this bad. Yeah. These motherfuckers are getting dunked on in the 50s. Uh, that's yeah. rough. That's rough. I don't think I've seen a game get shit on uh, this globally. <clears throat> well, the problem was is that this was supposed to be Microsoft's big push because this game was already delayed an entire year. Ooh. Microsoft, this was supposed to come out sometime last year in 2022. How the fuck? But they announced right around this time last year, in May, I think it was May 12th, they announced that this game and Starfield were getting delayed into 2023. So it's 
potentially the case that this game was already known that it was going to fucking shit the bed. They're like, we're going to give you another year. Do whatever the fuck you can to push this out into a playable state. They pushed it out. Phil Spencer uh, did an interview, I think, a couple of days after this game released. He was probably going to want to talk about the Xbox Game Showcase and the successful launch of Redfall, but everybody shit on Redfall. So basically, it was just him apologizing for the game. God damn. They said that they did internal reviews of the game, and I'm starting to think the fact that Phil Spencer doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. I have a feeling, because of how hands-off Microsoft is with all of these things, that they relied on, or at least Phil Spencer, the CEO, he he tries to be like, I'm a gamer just like it. I'm like, I don't think he does fuck all, honestly. I don't think he knows shit about what's going on with all of the studios underneath uh, the Xbox platform. I have a feeling he's taking other people's words as what's actually going on in the game. He probably relied on somebody inside of Arcane to do like these mock reviews, as they call it, yep. to come up to the to the conclusion that this game was going to be a like a like a high 70s, maybe like a low 80s game. Yeah. He was fed some bad information because if he had played what I played and I'm pretty sure they gave like a day one patch to fix some stuff even compared to the one version that I played. If he played any significant amount of time, he would have been like, this is going to bomb. People are going to beat the fuck out of this game. Yeah. So Damn, that's, that's rough, the reason dude. why people are, yeah, that's the reason why people are dunking on it because just, it was arcane. People were expecting a specific type of game. Yeah. When we saw what this game was supposed to be, people were just like, I don't know about this. People were already kind of skeptical about it. And then the game released. And when people realized like it was everything they feared, they just tore into it. Maybe Arcane is just not big enough um, to handle a game like this. Maybe. I don't know. Um, maybe. I don't know. Maybe they needed more staff that were like uh, capable of making something uh, or, or like executing their vision or something. Um, cause sometimes it's staff. Sometimes it's an experience. Uh I mean, all projects go through this. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. But you don't... Again, we're not game developers. So, like, even to... Uh, we, we look at... Uh, I look at stuff. I don't want it to speak for you. I look at stuff from, like, the development cycles that I'm involved in, which are application development and stuff like that. So, desktop and web applications. Um, Some iOS shit. But for the most part, like, we run in sprints. You know, you have, like, a long cycle, all this other shit. Your application goes out. It's typically peer-reviewed, uh, user-tested. You got all these fucking things you have to do. Um, all these calculations you have to go through and all this other shit. Um, typically, applications are in a pretty stable state by the time they push out um, to the public. Mm -hmm. And then you go through, like, iteration cycles and stuff like that to, like, get versions out there that... Uh, of new features and stuff. You don't get that luxury inside of video games. When it goes out, <laughs> you don't you don't get to keep pushing versions in most cases. Whatever the customer gets their hands on on day one, including your day one patch, has to be the best face you can put in front of them, right? So, uh, But that's not, how, that's not how it's been. It's definitely not how it's been. There was a meme I saw the other day, and it was like fucking six games or something like that on this Reddit post. Uh, it was like some, I don't know, six by six square or something. And it was like every fucking game on there was like released like dog shit, released like dog shit. And the last game that they have on there was the new Microsoft game that's coming out. Uh, uh, fuck Starfield. Wait, Starfield. Yeah. And they were like question marks on it. Um, everybody's expecting Starfield to fucking tank too, just based on, I mean, Jedi, Survivor. I mean, I, I know these are all different like fucking uh developers but jedi survivor came out like dog shit um right redfall came out like dog shit like every fucking big game this year has launched to uh failure um or just like bug after bug after bug on pc in most cases some of the console games have been pretty good but redfall i mean it's like you know so he's so here's the thing. Well, it kind of it launched in a rough state on console mm -hmm. and it r launched in a rough state on PC. Redfall did. Yeah. But we also got to remember, at least with Starfield, mm -hmm. this is from Bethesda. This is from the same it. team. This is from the yeah, this is from the same team that released Fallout. 
Skyrim, Oblivion, the Elder Scrolls series, all of that stuff. And so what does all of those games have in common? When they launched, they were in piss poor states. Like the whole, the whole, like the, those games are memes about yeah. just how jank it is because of just the way that the engine works with fallout and oblivion. Like it all uses the same. I think it's called the creation engine. Everything is physically based. So you walk into somebody's house, you can just like tear all their shit apart. You yeah. can like knock their books off the shelves. You can knock the plates and forks and, and food off of their tables. Yep. You do all that shit. You can There's put a basket that, on their head and steal all their shit without them seeing it. Yeah. <laughs> so like that's the that's how the game is. Yeah. It's funny looking back on it, you know, because of all the memes that came out of it. But if you played this game at launch, you were probably getting stuck into the environment. You were probably getting launched. Like we were talking about the companions. Yeah. You know, you have those big troll characters in Skyrim. Oh, God. And so they do like the slam move. And like it would Beep. launch your fucking um, companion. And this isn't this is on launch. Yeah, this is the game years, years, years after, after it's been released. Still like that, and it still launched your fucking companion all the way up in the air, and they just kind of disappeared there. Yep. And then, like a couple of hours later, like you'd see your companion running up to you, just like, "Where the fuck have you been? Where have you been, Jessica? Where yeah. have you been? Yeah, because they probably got <laughs> launched in the air. They probably flew halfway across the map. They fell, they got been fucking back it. up, and then just <laughs> and just been booking it back to your location the entire fighting, time, fighting bears and wolves the whole way across the map. Yeah. That's ex- <laughs> so that's the pedigree. Yeah. Apparently they have creation engine two, whatever the fuck that means for Starfield. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if that means that they're fixing all of this stuff or if that means that Starfield is going to be exactly what we think it's going to be. It's, it's, it's going to launch. It's going to be buggy as fuck. It's going to be mean the fuck out of itself. But because it's a kind of like, um, successor or spiritual successor to like the fallout series and oblivion but this time in space that people are gonna just roll with it and they're gonna love it because eventually they're going to you know smooth out all the, the critical bugs yeah. but we don't know we don't know but we'll find out soon i think the game releases in september i've um i've never beat yeah. skyrim because of the jank there there's um d- depending on how you play the game uh, depends mm-hmm. on how certain bugs happen in the game. And I've played the game three times from just starting over. Uh, and now the, the current version, by the way, when I try to launch it on my, my machine, uh, something to do with my RAM or clock speed or something, uh, I cannot get past the intro. Uh, because the, really? the horse cart does this. Yeah. And every time it touches something, it speeds up and it speeds up and it speeds up and then it starts flopping around and then it hits a rock and we launch into the sky shaking and spinning so much that looking at the screen makes you want to vomit. Um, and it's oh. every fucking time. What you probably want to do is you have to make sure to lock your frame rate to 60 FPS. Oh, okay. The, that engine mm-hmm. does not handle high frame rates well at all because I have a, I have a high refresh monitor. Yeah. And I wanted to have play it with high frame rate, but hmm. anything higher than 60, like the physics gets real fucked Oh, real quick. Well, then I'm so fucking dumb. That was my fault. Then. Yeah. No, that's the, that's the entire point. Like this is not something that should be happening, but because sure. I think creation engine itself, that's probably just how it is. And it's not something that they can easily fix because it's, it's all math. the physics the physics, everything is probably all tied into yep. the frame rate. And yep. so if they support 120 frames, that means they have to redo the physics mm-hmm. in order to support that high frame rate. And they're just like, nah. nah. I, I think the, the last time I tried it with high frame rate, I think it was like 120 or 165 FPS that I played it at. Mm-hmm. And I would jump. And so, like, it would, like, launch my character up in the air, and then I would fall down and then just fucking splat. Holy shit. Yeah. So, I, I, I couldn't play the game that way. Hmm. I would try to play the game, and then I would, again, like you said, like, the, with the cart, I would just be running, and then I would get launched in the air, and, like, there was no way I could <laughs> fucking survive. All right. All right. I had so to lock it to 60. Either. Yeah. And that, so, lock it to 60. Okay, I'll try that. There's, but there were other bugs. So like I'd get pretty, what I felt like was kind of far. I'd, I'd been playing the game for like 20 hours, which means like I was like two hours into the story or something. 
um, because you're just going through all the caves. Right. But you go to this one town, you're supposed to like unlock this door and go into like a sewer or something. I don't know. Every time I open that fucking door, the game crashes. Doesn't fucking matter. Doesn't matter what playthrough I'm on. I just tried to go straight through the story. It didn't matter. Every time I touched that door, the game would crash. I loaded up on a different save on a different fucking computer. It did not fucking matter. Um, so I just, I, oh. I, yeah, I just never could get past that part. That's different. Yeah, uh, I think I know. I think I know what you're talking about. I never, I never had any issues with that. Yeah, actually, I, talked, I, to, I did beat the game. Oh. I did beat the game. I've talked to other people about it too, and they're just like, "Yeah, never had that problem." I don't know. It must be a you thing. And I was like, "All right, cool." So, yeah, it's basically fuck yeah. you, man. Maybe I'll just play it on the <laughs> fucking Switch. I'll play it in you know, seven twenty p locked to thirty frames a, or something. Uh, I mean, if I'm if I'm being honest, that's probably going to be the best way to do it. Honestly, yeah, because it's it's on a machine um, that has dumbed it way the fuck down to the lowest performance levels that it could be. Um, yeah. Other than that, I need to just play it on like a Samsung refrigerator or something. So probably, but yeah, uh, definitely. If you could play it on PC again, just remember try to lock that frame rate. Uh, I don't think that's something that you can do without mods. Uh, outside of that, you're probably going to have to go into like um, your uh, NVIDIA uh, control panel. Just and lock, lock the entire thing to 60 fps yeah the only the only solution outside of that is to force your monitor to go into uh 60 fps mode if you have a high refresh monitor yeah it's like a 144 or something like that it's like yeah i don't know my monitor is like 49 inches wide or some shit it's huge so like yeah so if you have uh, if you have a setting if you have a setting inside of like the the monitor settings to turn it to 60 fps do it there or else find another way to lock. So the reason I didn't go that route is because I hate the way fucking 60 FPS looks on a Windows desktop. Yep. Uh, yeah. The like the way that the mouse moves when it's at 165 for me, it's like it's just so fucking smooth. It's so oh, god damn, it's so fucking buttery smooth. So lowering it down to 60 just killed me. So I was trying to find a way to lock the game to 60, and the only way you could do that is to get mods. You, you know why you know why you have this problem is because you're spoiled with the high refresh rate of uh Mac monitors. I don't have Mac monitors. I thought I thought you uh, were on a fucking MacBook Pro or some shit. That's my Mac machine. Yeah. I have a Windows desktop, dude. Oh, you know this, right? No, this whole time I thought you were on a fucking yeah, I mean I know you're on a desktop right now like a Windows desktop. I thought you um, yeah. worked on a Mac. I did work on it. I do work on a Mac, but yeah. I have, I do, I have dual 165 Hertz monitors from a- Asus. Yeah. That I, that I game on. I don't game on my fucking Mac. No, I'd be God, a retard no. if I did Yeah, that. that's fucking crazy. No, 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 no. I'm just saying like the whole Mac experience, um, the high refresh rate, the good color values, all that uh, other shit. Yeah. It's really smooth. I don't, I don't know if, does Mac have... I think Mac does not have... I think the Mac screen is only 60 FPS. Is it fucking really? Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, I'm, re- I'm, I'm, um, I'm an R word. So, man. All right. They look nice, though. You're right, yeah. though. Yeah, they, they are real pretty. <laughs> Got that pixel density. Um, well, shit. I think we've shit on, you know... Uh, I think I think so. All, all these games too much. Um, I guess the good takeaway here is, uh, you guys, if you haven't subscribed to the Humble Bundle, um, and you play on PC, uh, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. Uh, it's like twelve dollars a month. You get a couple free games out of it. You don't get all of them uh, in the in the current choice model unless you are like an old time subscriber like us. Is that um, true? Is that, did I, they still do that? I thought they changed it. Oh, maybe they changed it back. I don't know. Um, yeah, if you get them all, then, then get them all. They're all, most of them are really good. Um, I think everybody should try invisible hand. I think it's going to be funny. Uh, spirit fair. Yeah. If you're not like going to cry a lot, or maybe you want to cry. I think that'd be a good game. If you're into a fucking big shooty, boom, boom, uh, RTS, try Warhammer. Uh, if you want to get spooked a little bit, try Bendy and the dark revival. A lot of good games in the humble bundle this month. Um, and then again, uh, if you haven't, please go and listen to Michael's uh, daily uh, 
What are you calling these things? Like daily gaming news? I mean, that's that I, I there's still no name for it. That's what <laughs> I call it, just to separate it out from everything else. But they're on all of our audio uh, channels, so like uh, Spotify yeah. and Apple Podcasts, stuff like that. Uh, they are not on YouTube. Um, well, that would because, take way too much work. Yeah. Um, it's so much easier just to drop the audio file and just have it RSS out to the world. So if you want to listen to those, go there. Um, yep. Quick. It's just a quick recap of everything uh, as far as gaming news and yep. during the day. Uh, 10, 10 minutes or so, uh, on average, uh, maybe a little bit longer if it's a heavy news, uh, news day. But outside of that, like, if you just want to get a quick rundown of any of the cool, interesting shit that happened during the, uh, during the day, uh, it releases 3 PM Pacific and 6 PM Eastern time. And it's, it's no nonsense. It's just straight to the point on a lot of, uh, new stuff. Um, I've noticed that if you have some opinions, you give them, but they're, Spoiler free for most part. Um, and they're fun yeah. to listen to. They're just, they're chill. Uh, it's good treadmill shit. Basically. Yeah. Like there's, there's, uh, there's not a lot of fat, uh, in the episodes. I do that. I do that on purpose. Um, basically because, uh, like most of the time, like this is, this is all shit that happened like in the past, I don't know, four or five hours. Mm. So trying to have like an opinion and I don't feel qualified to talk about a lot of this shit. And most of the stuff is just, it can be like rumors or just like facts based based on what other rumors are out there or what information got released from the company. There's really nothing to, to add to it. Like, you know what I mean? So it's just boom, 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 boom. And then just like, I'm going to try to respect your time. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time giving some bullshit opinions. This is what the podcast is for. Yep. Yep. I like it. Uh, it, it feels like, uh, the NPR of gaming news is what it feels like to me. Like it's, it, it's mostly dry. It has a little bit of humor where it needs to be. Um, but it's just, like you said, headlines, a little bit of facts moving on. Um, so that's cool. Basically. Yeah. I, yeah. I think anybody should, uh, give it a shot. Um, even I've started listening to them. I enjoy them. Um, and I know that sounds weird. <laughs> uh, that is weird. Yeah. I'm, a little, I'm I'm keeping my eye on you, bro. Good. I don't know about you anymore. Well, no, no, no. I mean, like, we talk a lot and we do the podcast stuff. And um, it's weird to, uh, even when I watch my friends stream or watch, watch you stream and stuff like that when you used to do that, if uh, we're friends and then it makes me feel like, I'm having a parasocial relationship with you. What the fuck is that supposed to mean, dude? <laughs> so parasocial relationships are what people have with people online that they don't know. You fucking idiot. I know what parasocial means. <laughs> that's not that's not why I said that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <sighs> I don't know. I, okay, dude. here's the deal. Here's the deal. I don't. You're the only person that I know who has online content. That's like worth listening to. So when I listen to it, I'm like, oh, this is my friend. This is really cool. And then like I'm gushing and it's, it's, I don't know. It's fucking weird. Um, one day when I make a video and you watch it, you'll be like, oh, okay. I get it. <laughs> I'm fucking with you, man. Okay. I'm fucking with you. All right. <laughs> All right. So I was trying to twist your words against you for absolutely no reason. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to see how you were going to respond to that. Well, uh, I got a little embarrassed, but other than that, uh, I, I also the fact that it's, I don't have the, so my camera died because the power source that I plugged it into mm -hmm. was not charging it. So oh. that's why it died. But you would have been able to see, if you had been able to see my face, I think you would have, uh, had a good time. You would have caught the context of that, but you didn't. So yeah. I was just having little, I was a little, having little there. funzies, man. Little I was having a little funzies. I like it. I was it. fucking I at like you, it. man. I, you know what? That to be fair, that's the uh, that's the spice of life, dude. A little yeah. little little poke, a little razz. It's all good, man. Yeah, so I, pre I appreciate I appreciate I appreciate uh your your thoughts about it, man. Like yeah. that's um that's why that's why I keep doing it, man. Yeah, I like it. It's good stuff. Um I I post it on other discords and stuff like that. I try to get other people to listen. Um I don't know. I I think we're going places. Uh I think we're just 
this might take time yeah. i don't know uh, um, i mean that's that's how i mean if you if you see how like how all of these other youtubers have done it uh i think i was listening to one dude today uh because he was he was talking some shit about some some stuff that youtube was pulling mm -hmm. he's been doing it for well at least the person he was talking about had did it for like a decade it took him 10 years to get like 850 followers. God damn. 850,000. I'm sorry. 850,000. Oh. So that's it. Yeah. Not 850, but 850,000. So this is, this is like you, you have to keep pushing out content. Yeah. Got to keep refining the process. You got to find out what works and what doesn't. Mm. And when you find out what does, you kind of go after it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it just depends. Like it takes time. Like once you find, once you find your voice, once you find your audience, you just got to keep at it. Yeah. Yep. I agree. I agree. And, um, I don't know. Just glad to be doing this with you. Super fun. Yeah, man. Yeah, it is. I, I'm, I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it, man. <laughs> same, same. I look forward to it every Sunday. Uh, I guess with that, man, uh, thanks for popping on. Thanks for, uh, putting together the notes again this week. Sure. It was super fun to talk about. Super fun to shit on Redfall. Not really. I feel really bad for him. Uh, I hope everybody yeah, I feel bad for him too. makes a rebound. I'm sure that's detrimental. Um, I hope your uh, blood work goes well tomorrow uh, for whatever I mean, that's I'm not going to find out the results. I'm like, uh, as long as they don't fucking kill me with the needle, I think I'll, I think I'm going to be all right. Yeah. I'll find out like if, if my issue with my huge cock yeah. is, uh, is something I need to worry about. I, uh, when I wanted I get to the mention it. Next <laughs> I wanted to mention that, but I wasn't sure if you wanted, because it's personal medical knowledge, you know, like, so uh, Michael and I used to go out and um, do a lot of stuff, but we had to stop going out so much lately because he keeps sitting on his dick. Um, so, and, and in public places where they don't have like various all seats, it's pretty painful. So he's getting that checked out. Um, you know, yeah, it's unfortunate. Like the doctors are really worried about my huge dong. Yeah. Like, uh, it's like, it's, it's impressive, but kind of medically worrying. So yeah, yeah. We're it's, trying it's, to, we're trying to get that. It's really cool to pull out at parties. Like fucking, it's like a hat trick, right? Like it's super fun. <laughs> um, you take that sometimes thing to I the, throw it over my, I throw it over my shoulder sometimes. Yeah. Like he's taking it out. Like we go to the hood and we go to barbecue joints and he takes it out. Dude, everybody's having a good time. Um, so, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, you know, it, it, it can be painful. Uh, dude can't get a heart on fucking has a heart attack. So, uh, <laughs> you know, more power to you. Hope you get it fixed. <laughs> I think this dick joke has gone on far long enough. <laughs> Way too far. Way too far. Now, now I'm uncomfortable on my huge dick. <laughs> and now uh, you're making so, me self-conscious. Like, there you go. oh no. There you go. Well, fuck. Uh, I've been normal size cock. You've been giant cock. And we <laughs> were two dudes talking about video games while drinking pints, I guess. Yeah. Lots of water. Having various sizes of cocks, apparently, yeah. too. Jesus Christ. It's actually really, really small. <laughs> it's super tiny. <laughs> uh, that's what the I think, they call it, I think they call it a micro penis. I think that's no, what the medical no, no, term no. is. They call it fun size. They call it fun size. Like a Tootsie Roll. Yeah, better than the mini Tootsie Roll, not like the big ones. You know, the what? ones it's a, it's probably this like the sh the shitty vanilla ones that they give out during Halloween. Like nobody wants to put that in their mouth. You know what the best part about that is? Is you don't have a choking hazard. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Thank God, I guess. <laughs> oh, 